Hi guys, it's me, Ron Funches. I hope you enjoy the podcast. I enjoy making it for you. Listen, we are listener supported. So if you could support us by buying a t-shirt at ronfunches.com, look in my merch section, or prowrestlingtees.com and search Ron Funches. You can get a getting better t-shirt. You can get a murder cake t-shirt. You can get a giggle fit t-shirt. You can get a Fungimania t-shirt. Whatever type of t-shirt you want. You can get a get high watch wrestling t-shirt. Those are classic. Go go get yourself a t-shirt and support the podcast. Keeps it up and running so I can pay Halston and uh, not be upset about it. <laughs> also, another way to support me is by coming seeing my live shows please come and see me i will be in i'll be at wrestlemania april 4th through 8th i'll be in new york city just hanging out not doing shows but if you see me come give me a hug too sweet me give me a high five um i will be in australia for the melbourne perth and sydney comedy festivals april 16th through the 27th, May 9th through the 11th, I will be at Helium Comedy Club in Buffalo, New York. May 16th, I am in the space in Hamden, Connecticut. And in May 17th, I am in Brooklyn, New York at the Bell House. Please help me sell these out so I can bring my friends Blair and Gabe. And that'll be a great time for all of us. I got some more, more days coming up. The Mary Met Marauder Tour will be announced shortly, even though I told you the name here because I love you guys here. Because if you on this podcast, you in the family. So, you know, everybody else online, they're going to find out later. But you guys already know the name of the tour. We're going to have some t-shirts, some posters. We're going to have... We're going to go everywhere. It's going to be fun. Me, Blair Saki, Gabe Dinger, Merriment Marauder Tour. Look out for it shortly. See you soon. Bye. That's me. I'm Ron Funches, and we're all working on getting better. Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. It's me. It's Ron Funches. Hope you're feeling well. Hope you're doing great. Hope you're feeling strong and positive and believing in yourself. Um, I hope that uh, your enemies die fiery deaths. No, that's not what we want, right? We think we do in the moment. But, you know, I hope your enemies come around and learn that they're just jealous of you. Uh, and, uh, maybe you got something that you can learn from them. That's the thing that um, I believe in. Uh, that usually the people that we are surrounded with in our life are there to teach us lessons and there for a reason, even if they're, we consider them negative people in our lives that we don't like. Um, usually they're a manifestation of um, aspects, negative aspects of our own selves that, that we carry, and that's what bugs us about them when we see it in other people, you know? So if you have someone in your life that you just can't stand, uh, maybe look about what what about them that you don't enjoy and maybe see if that's a part of uh, of your own makeup and once you address that in yourself uh sometimes those people tend to disappear from your life and it's weird like that um but it's just something i believe in that's a because i'm a weirdo <laughs> and i hope you're a weirdo you know i hope you're feeling strong in whatever you believe in and becoming more and more yourself and don't listen to other people when they try to put you in little boxes and make you feel like you can't do something or you got to act a certain way i found myself doing that today when i got in the uber i got in there today and i was like hi and then i saw the uber driver was black and then i was like <clears throat> what's up <laughs> and i was like Oh man, still after all these years, you're afraid to be yourself sometimes. Uh, so, you know, learn from my mistakes, learn from my lessons. You got to be you at all times, but it's hard to feel safe. So, I'm doing that sometimes. I understand. Uh, you know, just try little by little, circle that you feel comfortable with and build it out. That's one thing I'm trying to do comedically to get better, is, is just be myself more and more, no matter what. Talk about the things I want to talk about, even if I think other people aren't going to relate to it. Um, it's one thing reasons why I like going to the comedy store is that I can follow somebody talking about, uh, you know, Caitlyn Jenner or whatever people tend to be talking about today. And then I just go up there and talk about, uh, you know, what am I talking about right now? I guess how home ownership. Uh, I'm trying to get into some material about how there's no women in cereal. Um, and that, that's, that, that, that shouldn't be, there should be more women in cereal. Um, I'm trying to do jokes about, about relationship and living with robot and how it's weird to live with somebody and, and the lessons you learn and that, uh, you know, 
boring topics. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm interested in right now. And and that's okay. You just learn to just enjoy the art, what you do, and you get money where it can come and just um use money from certain things to to fund what you're really passionate about. Um and it's gonna be a lot of rambling today, guys. I'm feeling good. I just got done with a workout. We could do a little health check. Um as we know, it was my goal. I was at 330, 34 pounds, 335, somewhere around there. And my uh, doctor wanted me to get 10 pounds down in three months. So we have until the end of March to do that. Um, but currently, I am 224. So we already did it. So we just got to keep it going. Um, you know what's going on. If you listen to my diet recently, it is just two metric shakes and apples and a tablespoon of almond butter and then a dinner that is like boneless skinless chicken breast and a bunch of veggies and water and then a zevia soda as my treat because it's zero calories um so if you want to try that I don't recommend it. It's not fun, um, you know. But it's working. It's working for me, and I'm feeling strong, and I'm doing it under the guidance of my my trainer, and I got my doctor. So, um, you know, it's a little bit of uh, you no know, eating after eight. So there's some fasting in there as well, um, and it's boring, and sometimes it sucks. But goddamn, if it don't work, and I feel strong, flexing my chest. If you just saw, if you just watched the YouTube version, I'm sure you could you could tell. <laughs> And I'm feeling happy. It's my birthday tomorrow in real time. This this episode is going to come out a couple of weeks after. So you missed it. But I guess the least you could do is buy a getting better t-shirt or, or a ticket to come see me. And, and that's how you can celebrate my birthday for me. I'll just go be nice to somebody who you don't know. You know, give, give a homeless person a dollar, even if you know they're going to use it for drugs. Sometimes I give homeless people weed. It's fun. They're very appreciative. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ron. Okay, thank you, Halstead, for interrupting. You got me a gift. You interrupted the podcast to give me a gift. If you hear the rustling, if you're listening and not watching, you just hear rustling. If you're watching, you're watching me unwrap a gift in real time, which I can't see, but I can already tell it's some type of bong. Um, So you know I love it. Thank you. I was worried that I'd hate it. It is fun. It is weird and mysterious and monstrous. <laughs> this is the perfect Halston gift. Thank you. I love it. You weirdo. Is it a devil? <laughs> it's almost racist. <laughs> Well, he's, he's brown. He's got a big nose. Uh, <laughs> but he doesn't got red lips, so it's not true blackface. That would be true that blackface if you know your your you know. You can buy those at like Goodwill. You can just get like like the little monkeys that have the black face and the, the uh, red lips. Have you ever seen those? But that's not this. I like this. Thank you very much. I'm gonna smoke out of this as soon as we're done. Thank you, Halston. And good, good friends who will give you pipes on your birthday. That's fun. That's a good thing. Um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for a lot of things. Uh, let's go through it. That's one thing I like to do on my birthday, Christmas, whatever. Um, especially as I get older. I'm going to be 36 tomorrow. Um, you know, if I find less reasons to be like, oh, it's party time every year by a gift for me and more about like, man, what am I truly grateful to have in my life and to be around and, and, and to be just happy that I'm still alive. And so one of those things, definitely my health. Um, you know, that I keep having that fight. I was talking with, with my friend Reggie uh, Reggie Watts today, and we just tr- both struggling about how, you know, you try to, to meld the diet and the exercise, and you reach these plateaus, and it seems like you can't get through them, but you just try to stay focused, and especially when you're a comedian, and you, and I'm sure just as any person, you know, then you, ha- you get the friendship aspect, and people want to go out late night and eat chicken and waffles, and you, you got to sit there and be disciplined, or you just can't go out or 
You end up eating that bite of that waffle and hating yourself because it takes about three days for your body to adjust back to losing weight again. So it's just a constant struggle. Um, and, and But I'm grateful to have people to struggle with. I'm grateful for, for you guys who, who listen to this podcast and who, who get something out of it. Because this isn't really, you know, it's not like one of those hilarious murder podcasts. <laughs> that people seem to love so much uh you know just listening about people dying um but it's just as a podcast is about a, a person's tr- struggle to get better and i like that other people are relating to it and, and, and i get a lot of emails and i get people just coming up to me on the street talking about how they get something out of it and that i motivate them and i'm truly grateful for that i'm grateful for my relationship with robot um she's a wonderful lady and we're getting to, to i'm and i'm grateful you know sometimes this last week we spent a lot of time together she was sick and then I, and then i was home for a week and i'm not used to being home all the time and you know we both had a little little bit but it's nice to have that with somebody who, and then to have somebody who wants to work through that with you and, and and i'm not used to that sometimes i'm used to just like all right this isn't super fun let's just cut it out um but she's a person who 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 really is like hey okay you know these things happen you know we just had a, a, a thing of circumstances and we can still work through it and i'm willing to work through it and i really appreciate that about a person and, and i'm willing to do that as well and you and what else my son my mom um you know gabe all my friends my comedy the ability that i can go out there and do comedy and have fun um i'm very very grateful that i'm grateful that i have most of my hair uh, you know i got like at least 75 percent of it and that's good uh you know that seems like that is also a struggle but at least I, right now i got enough money that i can pay for them to take my blood out of my body and then spin it around and then put it in my head and that's crazy <laughs> I didn't tell you about this, Halston. That's my private business. <laughs> it's like a thing athletes do. And I guess it worked for so many things. And also a thing that like some ladies do for facials, the vampire facial. You know, when they take their blood out of their arm and they spin it and, and the, the white separate the white blood cells. It's kind of like slightly like doing some like stem cell therapy in, in, in a way. And um, and then they for me, I guess they're just pumping it into my head to try to stimulate the hair growth back there. Because I'm trying to get these leading man rolls and I don't want them to put a little fake piece of hair in my head. Because I see other people. I see you Aziz. I see <laughs> I see you Tony Hell. I see you. I see you steve carell you out there y'all i watched the first season of the office and then i watched that commercial for pepsi how you older and got more hair (laughs) i'm gonna figure out your secrets i'm gonna do it too (laughs) i don't know and that's important to me i didn't know it was until you start losing your hair uh but it is, and if I do lose it, then I'm just going to get really into hats and be more of like a Cedric the Entertainer. And I'm okay with either way, but right now, I'll fight for it because I, I don't think I, I don't think I want to be bald right now. We'll figure it out, and I don't want to go the Steve Harvey route. <laughs> Wear a flat top for years. <laughs> I'm also grateful because I've been going around pitching this game show uh, with some friends that probably can't mention and um we're going around we got our first sale we sold it to a company um so we're going to keep pitching to a few other places see if we can get some more more deals but that always feels good to just get off the snide because if you know my last project i went in um i didn't sell and that was the first time i didn't sell something which you know is not um I mean, I'm new, so it's not like, oh, I've sold 30 things, but, you know, I liked, I liked my little record, but, um, you know, you know you're know, you bound not to sell something at some point, and I'm just grateful for, for these opportunities, especially while my show, the show I really want to make about my son and I, is still uh, in limbo, and I'm becoming more and more in peace at, with that, and I'm getting offered these pilots and these other jobs and I'm turning them down and that, um, that takes a lot of faith and some of it, it, it I question, <laughs> but I believe in myself. There'll be more jobs. There'll be things that come around. That's one thing that, that's true. There's always more jobs. There are always more shows being made. And as long as I keep working on my skill set and 
getting better, um, I'll always be hireable, you know, because I'm a good person. I work hard. I always try to add to a project. I never try to come in with a bad attitude, and I never try to take a project that I don't want to be at. So um, when you get me, you get 100% me, which means a lot of times you don't get me because I don't take a project, and then I'm going, mm, I don't think I like that. And that's a beautiful position to have right now that's only afforded to me by stand-up, and hopefully soon uh, this podcast will be profitable <laughs> <laughs> but stand up is profitable voiceover is profitable and so that's one thing i can always say is uh, um it's your best when you can when you can diversify even you know even that means like having a job and doing uber or or, or baking i know people who are really good at baking or people who are really good at home furnishing who do their own little side businesses and then sometimes those eventually take off to be their full businesses like a, a, a lady i know in, in in salem oregon who i grew up with and, and her company's phoenix furnishings and she's doing some really really good stuff and it's just cool to see people who follow their passion and follow their craft and follow what they're good at no matter what it is and i always tell people you don't have to be uh you know a, a comedian superstar movie star voiceover talent um just true you know wonderful person like me <laughs> find whatever you're good at maybe you're the best woodworker maybe you're the best best uber driver maybe you're the best uh at just making delicious bacon sandwiches i don't know Come up with something. Figure it out. Follow what you love because there's nothing negative about that. You can still, you know, you got to still keep your mind. Follow, you know, follow your heart, but trust your mind. So, you know, the things I did in the past, I wish I hadn't. Like I quit my job too early and put my son in, in some bad financial situations that because I was like, I'm going to be a comedian and it worked out. And I'm lucky that it worked out. But, um, you know, sometimes you got to learn to be smart and, and, and just do some things you don't really love uh, just so that they can fund the things you do want want to do. Um, that's what I did recently. I went and, oh, no, I'm going to save that topic for next week. Ooh, that's fun. That's a teaser. I'm going to talk about things I did next week. Uh, but we do wish we're taping two today, which we're doing a lot recently. So I'm trying to uh, space it out. Uh, where are we at time-wise? Ooh, perfect. We'll just um we'll just wrap it up by talking about our last guest and we'll lead into our next guest. Um last guest was Moses Storm. I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. I did, because I like speaking with that guy. Um he's cool. He's just, you know, he's just booked a pilot with, with Mike Schur and, and and he's just a funny comedian who gets a stamp by Conan and many other people, and he's just a guy who's been through so many life lessons because he was born into a cult. And that's just an interesting thing, but that's not all he's about. And he was clear about that. And that's just, that's cool when a person doesn't let like their, their, their story as a childhood that could be negative like that define them, you know? It's like what Titus said, life is what you do between tragedies. And I think Moses is a prime example of that. And I'm loving that he's succeeding and, and, and really taking off in comedy and I just hope that he continues that and he'll gain more confidence and believe himself and just uh, put out more positive stuff in the world because I think people need to hear his voice because he's, he's really, really funny. Um, our guest this week um, could only be defined by, I, th I think, one word. I, I like to say solid. This is just a solid dude all around. Solid comedian, solid actor, a pretty good singer. Um, he's just a guy who, like, when I bring up around all company, whether it's comedians or I just bring up to a robot, they always go like, oh, he's he's a good dude you know and that's 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 kind of rare in comedy there's a lot of people who minds we respect but we go like they're not that great of people and i won't and i won't name them <laughs> but i know them and uh and, he, and this guy's the opposite he's like a dude that really is about his family and his friends and and it's just fun to watch him um just really build this impressive resume of work under people's radar and i think he's one of the most underrated comedians today and one of the most underrated actors um he's just really re and just a really good fun positive dude he has a great podcast that people enjoy called about last night um and he's our guest this afternoon this evening this morning whenever you're listening it's adam ray and we'll be right back with him 
Uh, what are you up to today? Um, did some voiceover, and uh, you know, I stayed up. What, what, do you have a bedtime? No, no, I don't have a bedtime. Like you don't have because I know you're pretty. You know, we've talked about this uh, before about like having a routine, and mm-hmm. I think you have some sort of a nap schedule, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely which I, which structure. I dig. Yeah. yeah, but for me, I mean, I try to. Oh, dude, I don't think I've gone to bed before, <clears throat> you know, 2 a.m. since like 1994. Mm. Um, but uh, what time you got to get up? I mean, all my VO stuff is always 9 or 10. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting up at 8, 830. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like packing in a good five to six a night. Yeah. But like I need 10 to 12, mm-hmm. probably 15. <laughs> I would love 20. Not possible. But um, I just recorded my uh, album at the uh, Punchline in San Fran. Nice. And so, uh, yeah, it went great. It did four shows. The last time I did two, which I didn't like. And um, and I just asked if I could because I was like, oh, I want to have the option. And also, you know, I do. Why didn't you like the two shows? You didn't think it was Well, these were two shows from uh, the first album I did, which was in Tacoma, Washington. I just, uh, it was enough. But I do... Um, you know, I do an hour and change and I always do at least 10 to 15 minutes of crowd work throughout the, um, you know, the, uh, the set. And, uh, and I just wanted to be able to capture it, to be able to do enough shows to where it felt loose and I could play around a little bit and maybe take some of those moments and include them in the album. And, uh, and that happened. And so now I'm just going through and, you know, not trying to get too picky too. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to do finesse, like, uh, the beginning of a bit from this show. And then like the, you know, the, uh, one chunk from this show, you know, that's just, that's insane. But you do want it to be your best stuff. And and um, if something didn't hit and it was better on another show, you want to pull that up. But uh, I just got fixated, man. And I was up, I landed from, uh, I was in Salem visiting my dad and uh, doing some shows. There's a little tiny theater in Salem, Oregon. Did you know that? Yeah. The capital city. Capital city. city yeah. There. Yeah. They do like sketch and improv. They kicked me out of there. <laughs> what? Yeah. All right. Put a pin under in that story old, or go right Under old ownership. I must stress because they keep hitting me up to remove a Yelp review <laughs> uh, from when I. You yelped about it? Yeah. I was really mad about it because the guy said I was too dirty because um, I had a show. He, I think the guy was super conservative who owned it at the time. Yeah. And I did this show and it had a bunch of like just heathens and lesbians and he didn't like it. And he was like, you're too dirty and you'll never make it in comedy this way and, and i needed that money at the time yeah that i was working at that theater so i was a little pissed off and so i wrote a bad review about <laughs> this disguised guy as not, someone else no that's me yeah it's wrong not, yeah and that yeah. i mean like this guy doesn't know anything about comedy wait so you were working at the theater mm-hmm. i was teaching a class um and i was um uh booking shows wow so so that had to be a tough thing for them to swallow when an employee a current employee is just like, fuck this place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I was an ex-employee at the time. Oh, you were? Okay. At the Yelp review time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No, it was even those better were true balls when he you saw me years later after I'd done Conan and stuff. And, what did he say? Uh, he, I didn't, he was just like, go ahead, tell me I was wrong. And I was like, I don't, I don't have to. <laughs> Isn't it, wouldn't it have been cool if he doubled down on the, um, on the uh, disdain <laughs> and was like, oh, you think you're pretty cool because you did Conan? Talk to me when you've done Rosie O'Donnell. You know? <laughs> You'll just, never do yeah. Rosie. Yeah, because she's not on the air. <laughs> Slam. <You know? laughs> no cush balls for you. Cush <laughs> yeah. balls. What a cool little gimmick she had. Yeah. Yeah. Moms and love with the, that. With the cush company. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, you want to be in with the companies that um, that are looking to make a comeback, you know? Absolutely. Um, but so that those shows were cool. And then... Uh, I stayed up basically. I got back late at like eleven thirty, and uh, I was kind of look. There's some like family stuff going on with my pops and my stepmom, so I was kind of like, "Let's in talk a, about." Wow. <laughs> for sure, I was in kind of a sour mood, and I got home and I, I was like, "I want to focus. I want to be productive, and it'll get me out of my slump right now." Mm-hmm. And it's late, and so I fucking worked out for an hour, and then, um, and then uh, started editing my album from. 1 30 until 7 this morning and then uh, i had to go to an audition at 10 30 and then here we are but i i was jamming dude you know sometimes when you're just i mean again it was like minority report type shit where i listened to everything made notes and time codes and now i'm trying to piece now i'm trying to piece the order together because i was different order every night mm-hmm. uh and i just was like i'm not going to bed until i finish this and then finally i was like dude the sun's coming up 
you know, the Russian guy swimming in my pool. That's like my version of the rooster. And the Russian guy starts swimming laps at 7 a.m. And I can hear him because he just, just fucking flaps way too loud. Um, there's a lot of old Russian people in my uh, building. I also feel like there's some sort of drug, something going on because people rotate a lot. There's oh, like new people always coming in. Families and I always try to high five the new people. I'm like, what's up? You're new to the place. And no one has ever reciprocated the high five. It doesn't be drugs. It could just be human trafficking. It could be that. Yeah. Hmm. But drugs sounds more sexy, you know? Yeah. True. I'm like, oh, are we on the set of a TNT show? Because they know <laughs> drama. <laughs> <laughs> are we on Barry? <laughs> Thanks, Austin. Got a chuckle. <laughs> Do you not get many uh, outside chuckles from not, your... Not many. Sometimes oh, I look over to see... <laughs> if he's awake? Yeah, and he's usually like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, but that's Heard cool it. that you have... I mean, I'm sorry for whatever family issues that are going on. Okay, but I like them. that you um, handle it in a positive fashion and that you turn into to work and 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 working out as a way to deal with it you I, as long as i've known you you've been a pretty positive uh person yeah. is that i think you and i share that similarity uh that you know um my stand-up's not doesn't get too deep and heavy it probably will in five years you know like i'm definitely still riding this silly upbeats like even when i talk about some serious things with like my nieces and whatnot and it's still all i'm always trying to find more comedy than not in in whatever i'm talking about but um yeah i mean that's how i was from an early age like my when my folks split when i was nine and my sister was kind of going just dealing with some rough stuff and just fell to, with the wrong crowd and i was like peer mediating between my sister and mom when i was like nine and so i grew up quick you know i was i would basically patch them together and make it okay so that i could live in this like household and not it was basically i was like i don't want to be in a place where it's like so polluted and I don't want to go to bed unhappy, you know? Um, and so I would do that just to kind of even things out and which is crazy to just have that wherewithal to do that. And um, so it kind of made me deal with things like that. Like even when my mom tried to put me into divorce counseling and uh, I was so weirded out by it. It was just like big dude in a beard and he had this mini basketball hoop on his door and I would always like play. And I remember one time I would always come in and he was like, we got to talk. You can't just play hoops. And I was like, I don't fucking know you, dude. I ain't about to talk to you about what's going on with me. And I remember one time I shot one of the little Nerf balls up and it bounced off the rim and I tried to grab it. And he just grabbed it with one thing and he goes, you want the ball? Talk to me about your dad. And I was like, Mom, I don't think we're going to go back to this guy. Like, he's. <laughs> like, Mom, I think I want a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like threatening, uh, you know, offensive putbacks for uh, dad chat, you know? And um, so, so I would just kind of suppress things. And then, I mean, I guess suppress, but also because I've never been to therapy. And um, I talk things out with friends. But again, I kind of just have always had this like, figure it out, man, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't be a victim. Don't feel sorry for yourself. And you have a choice. Like I think early on, I was like, I mean, definitely soak and grieve. Like when bad things happen, if I don't get a job or there's, you know, the amount of uh, family wear and tear that, that I've had in the last five or so years, uh, there's always something, you know, when you got a lot of moving pieces and, and stepdads and stepmoms and half brother, you know, there's just, you know, and, and, and brother-in-law with kids from other moms and, and uh, he's a rapper, and he's white, and he's not Eminem, and and, uh, and you know, there's Machine just Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's actually not that bad. His rapper name is Dirte. Shout out. Look up his shit on YouTube. But also take into consideration when my sister was like, "This is the guy that is, I'm like fucking." What? Yeah, Dirte. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm like, does he have that's a real name? Name to accept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When yes, yeah, so when you hear like "I'm in love with Dirte," you're like, yeah. is that one of his songs? Are you yeah. just quoting is it? He or European? Is this a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was just like, I need to figure it out. Like, I don't want to soak. But again, you need to take that time to grieve so you can get to the, you know, feel a little bit of the bottom so that you can go, all right, now time to get back up top, you know? Because I just feel like, you know, we've all got our shit. No one, like, no one's really going to feel bad for you for that long, I feel like. And it's like, why waste time? And again, like, I think I've gotten better at turning that, you know, uh, route up energy into some positive. But, um, you know, and also keeping myself busy has always been how I've, stayed distracted you know um high school through you know even when i graduated uh, acting school at sc and was you know 
playing Wolverine at Universal Studios. <laughs> I could have just done that and been like, dude, I'm fine with the 22 bucks an hour. Let me talk to Greg Maddox and John Stamos in character and hit on some foreign chicks and do a couple open mics. But I was like, no, man, I got to get off Universal and I got to hit the mics and then I'm going to work at this casting office for free four days a week and write sketches on the weekend and try to shoot them. And, and uh, so, yeah, that's just kind of always how I've been but I mean hey man I get low like anybody and the lows are low sometimes you know and uh and what does that look like for you man I get real hard on myself you know and I I definitely um I just kind of shut down uh from the outside in and you know even now with like my girlfriend I'll I just kind of tell her like I just, I just you know she's you know not that I like need her to go away or I need space but I'm just kind of like I'm just I'm overwhelmed like I got a lot it's always like career family that are you know so big and i feel like i'm up there but i definitely am a little bit below both those things and even though which is a weird thing to say because it's like career is me but i'm Mm -hmm. i feel like there's so many things and i love that's not good yeah that's not good at all and so i try to go out of my way to like like last night like when when you know she was like oh i you know i haven't seen her in four days and she's like i want to you know, uh, uh, hang out a little tonight, maybe watch a movie before we go to bed. And I was like, I got to work out and I got to jam on this album. And that's what I got to do. And even though that was work, that was like for me and it was fulfilling. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. And it feels. Getting spe- a project done. Yeah. And but uh, you always definitely, that's the thing that I learned from before when I was, when I was, when I was married, um, one of the, the things that motivated me to get married is that she got pregnant. And when she, um, I was 19 and it was, I turned 20 a month before my son was born and a big part of me was like, Oh, I'm not going to be like my dad and like not be around. Yeah. And so I was like, well, this is my family and we're married and we're going to be together. And I was putting my family and my work above me. And because I thought that's the right thing to do, but I found you were losing a part of yourself. huh? Yeah. And I wasn't being, I wasn't being as good of a dad as I could be. And I was lying about wanting to be in that relationship. You know, I didn't want to be there, which is causing me not to be as good in the relationship as I could be because yeah. I didn't want to be there. Yeah. And I found once I was honest with myself and started putting myself a little bit first and be like this these i mean that came a lot with me starting to do stand up was like this is what i want to do this is what i feel like i need to do this is what makes me happy and once i put myself first a little bit i was a better dad and i was and i didn't think i'm a better um partner in relationship now you know because i know I know what I need and I can communicate that better. And what is putting yourself like, where does that, where does the balance lie? Because, you know, if you're, you know, as I think a comic and an actor and an artist and podcaster, like there is a bit of, you know, ego and narcissism involved because you do need to think that your shit matters and you got to be about yourself to do all this stuff. Right. And Mm -hmm. like have an air of confidence, but then like sort of balance to put yourself first, but then relationship, family, how do you uh, put yourself first, but still have those right up there um, as well? Because I think you you, you just don't look moments. at you don't look at them as separate things. Yeah, they're all part of the thing. The better because your family and your job they want you to be. Happy. So you will never pick the podcast over your son's birthday. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've done a setup. shows. I've, I've done like when I was younger I've done shows on my son's birthday yeah I've done shows on my birthday yeah and I think that's something that's shifted now like I don't I'm not doing a show on my birthday this year I'm not doing a show on my son's birthday this year yeah um, well he's also in that cool birthday age range yeah, where yeah, you gotta like yeah. so it's also 16. it's also your birthday dude yeah, you know what I'm saying like buying the things I want <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like these parties you're like oh we're we're cause I love Still how buddy party. buddy you and your son are so it's like yeah like now this is an opportunity for us to do something cool together right yeah Absolutely. Why no shows on your birthday? Um, I mean, it depends on, it really just kind of depends on the day. Depends on the money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I might go do a set at the store or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like to do whatever I love. But if, yeah. if it's just me going to go get a dinner with my girlfriend, I'm fine with that. And that is a cool shift because I've been that way too, where it's just like, I'm going to work through, you know, and I finally did that the last few years too, where I was like, I'm going to go home and like, you know, I rented like this like little beach house thing on one of these little, um, you know, uh, in, in Seattle, like, the, you know, um, Ocean Shores or, you know, um, uh, uh, Vashon Island, you know, these tiny little 
and I got my nieces and everybody came out and, and rented like this big like floaty fucking you know slide thing and which was again like for them but like th- through <laughs> them for me and um but uh it is like one of those things that you're like yeah you gotta step back and and you know the whole like live a life to have you know to have a life worth writing about is very like true i don't know if it's cliche but it's like shit man the amount of times when i get so fixated into just like work 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 i'm like you kind of like lose a little bit of like wait, like wait what do i like to do again who, mm-hmm. who am i you know yeah why am, am I, I doing this and then you get real high and look in the mirror and you're like truly who am i you know <laughs> this brownie is way too um i don't know where i got it from are you do you um give yourself enough credit for your how cool your career is and the things that you got going on or do you find yourself i mean I assume like all of us you're like oh i wish i had some things yeah. and um so I would imagine like when you're doing your second album, you'd be like, oh, I want to do like a hour special on the things. Yeah. And-, and that's a great question. I mean, look, dude, there's the amount of, I feel like people in the standup world that have kind of, um, I guess that quote unquote matter, the execs and, and people that put specials up that have uh, not really considered me, a, <clears throat> you know, um, a player in the game or you know definitely just fuels the fire and you hear this from so many like joe coy you know couldn't get his shit on netflix did it himself now then you know hear him talking about that in montreal as being comedian of the year you know and it's you have to turn that into fuel for the fire and you know i obviously want to want a special i think the game has changed but you know you still want that for yourself and everyone's like oh just do 30 minutes or like even you see these 15 minutes i'm like well fuck that man like i i don't think it's just the big dogs people are watching if people if you put a good hour together and it's out there like yourself like people are gonna respond and find it and like you know definitely does help when you when you got some cool shit going on like you do to partner with that you know but it's like you want like you had that hour and you're like this is this has got to be i need to you know the people need to see this you know and this is like you've worked hard on this and, and constructed it and i feel like that's what i've got with with my album and, and I think I just got to a point to where I was like I need to I need content out there like I can't there's so many ways that people are consuming everything and I know people at Sirius and Spotify and I was like you know I gotta take advantage of those relationships that you've cultivated and and not being a piece of shit and these people that want to help you and you're like all right and I got this club that I want to do it at and these people that approach me and and um and yeah I was getting really pumped like cutting it up last night because i was like oh this is gonna be i'm really proud of this and this is i'm spending i spent a lot of time on it and for shows i was so locked in and, and there's a lot of different stuff but i think it's a good representation of me and and then it's just on you know me to i guess push it out there and hopefully people to you know absorb it but i mean i go back and forth a lot i definitely have to remind myself where i was like 10 years ago you know I have to do that a lot because i'm very much like looking ahead like i do i get the cool thing i do it um, I mean, you know, great example. I was having a buddy on the podcast who uh, is a big voiceover actor. He does like Fozzie Bear on the Muppet Babies and uh, Bugs Bunny and and uh, I think Raph on Ninja Turtles. And he's just uh, kind of a juggernaut in the uh, VL world. Mm-hmm. And I was up for Kermit Eric on Muppet. Or- Eric Bowser, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He told me I was up for, uh, I knew I was up for Kermit for Muppet Babies, right? Who was like my guy. Like I was a huge Muppet fan. At one point I wanted to, quit acting and, and just be a, a Muppeteer, you know, like Jim Henson just was such a big influence on me and uh, creatively. And uh, and Eric goes, yeah, you, you were really close for Kermit. I was like, yeah, I went in like three times. And he's like, no, it was like you between you and two people. And I was like, what? And like just hearing that like got me really, I was on the flight, like got me weirdly upset because I was like, fuck, like I didn't realize it was that close. Like and I wanted it so bad. And then I was uh, texting with a buddy of mine and he was like, and then Eric had to go, hey, man, you were Slimer. Like, I'll take that any day. You can take all my voices for that. And then I was like, oh, man, it's all perspective, man. And then my buddy was like, you were on Curb. You just played in the NBA Celebrity All-Star game. And you fucking, like, it's so shitty that, to, like, sleep past things. And I, in those moments, Curb was the greatest day of my life to, like, film that. It's my favorite show. <clears throat> You as well, I'm sure, was a fucking real big yeah, kick. Yeah, that's one of my great <clears throat> moments is that we were in the, we didn't have a scene together, but we were in the same episode. And yeah, we, we get to trailer. see each other on the lot and share that. That yeah. was really, those things are real extra special to me when you get to see a bud and you're like, and you can kind of like under, you know, behind the, the scenes kind of be like, holy shit, because you can't really do, I mean, you can yeah. do that more or less on set, but you kind of want to, 
be professional. Yeah, and not totally act like you've been there before because it's like I haven't been on curb before, but you definitely don't want to come off that you're, you know. You're Larry David. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was almost on the tip of my tongue. Um, yeah, so, uh, but like, you know, it's it's crazy some of the things we get to do and you have to, you have to acknowledge and I guess reflect because it's a dangerous thing to, and I am, you know, guilty of it a lot to just look forward and be like, I don't have this. I'm, I'm always, and again, I think that balance of staying hungry so that you're going after it. Like I want my own show so bad, whether it's sketch or like a curb type show, I want that. And then I want to get to a point to where Sandler is where I can just employ all my funny friends. I feel like I just know an insanely amount of talented people that just need a little, just need an opportunity to, to show what they got. And like, mm. I've always been that way. Like even socially, like, you know, organizing get togethers in high school and shit like that. And I feel like that kind of bleeds into my career where I'm like, God, I, fuck, I just feel like I know I would love to put together something where I could just literally be like, you know, pick and just, you know, and weekly and not just like five people, but like something that really was including a lot of people to, you know, cause I feel like that's, the best part you know like yeah. that's why i enjoyed doing youtube sketches all the time because it was like just getting to <clears throat> you know be in control of, of all that but but very collaborative you know i'm being bringing in people that i was like oh this would be fun to let's all jam on this together you know and and make something from the ground Problem up solve. yeah that's yeah. like this is like the best you know like just to go in and do your lines and and bounce is uh it's cool too but like you know when you get that rapport with with um uh, you know, actors or comedians or whoever, and then you really get to, you know, create something like that's, you know, that's, there's no replacement for that, you know? Let's go back for a second and talk about the NBA celebrity all-star game. <sighs> Let's talk about it, baby. I'm wearing what the shoes. That like for it? Ooh, Straight from the game. Nice. These, uh, these defended Dr. Oz. <laughs> 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 I was wearing these when Steve Smith, NFL legend Steve Smith dislocated my pinky. <laughs> it was rough out there. These are the shoes I used to spin move on uh, JB Smooth. Did you see that little highlight on my I Instagram? I did see that. I can't stop. Brad goes, Adam has Carl. He texted me the other day because uh, I was telling the Sklar brothers to watch it before we went on their podcast. And Brad goes, Adam has carpal tunnel for how much he's jerked off to his own clip of his spin move. Well, who wouldn't? Yeah. And I'm also you like, you're just NBA jealous floor. that I can look Dr. Oz in the eyes you know, <laughs> and see how beautiful they are. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, dude, it was the fact. Also, here's a little unknown fact about that game. A friend of mine convinced me to go to a Body by Simone class four days prior. She, you know, right? She was, uh, she's big up at Netflix now, and, and another buddy of mine that works there was going, and, and I was like, oh, you know, this would be fun, maybe get a bit out of it, and also, like, you know, can talk some business and trying to, you know, get, get something in, in front of them. So uh, multiple reasons to go. It was very intense. It was 9 a.m. on a Sunday. I'm not doing it again. I'll be the first to say that. Would you go to a body by someone class? <laughs> no, I can imagine. But tell me. A lot of <laughs> a lot of bouncing, a lot of angsty female music and dancing, a lot of like Taylor's like at one point I'm just doing like, you know, trouble, trouble. Uh, you know, like just fuck a lot of like squint like no one was smiling. And every at one point this one song the the trainer the lead trainer, she was like, the, the lyrics were like, I'm sweet, but I'm psycho. And she was like doing this. And then she pointed to herself. She's like, that's me. And just like, and I'm in the back just bouncing and trying to keep up and, and doing a lot of this. And all of a sudden I feel my calf just tighten up. I was like, oh shit, I can't sit out. I'm one of two dudes here. Like I got to represent. And this is also 15 minutes into the class. There's 45 left. I got to rally. And it just got real tight, man. And it was very uncomfortable. And, uh, and the trainer was like, come on, Adam, stick with us. I was like, I'm in so much pain. She's like, you can do it. I'm like, I can't truly. And then uh, four days later, we're at the practice for the NBA Celebrity All-Star Game. And uh, and I'm uh, guarding uh, Quavo, right? A little, uh, which, by the way, and you're not going to be surprised by this. Didn't know who that was. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know Amigo? I know Migos, right? Mm -hmm. That's who he's a part of. Yeah, yeah. he's Amigo. He's Amigo. Mm -hmm. Great. Now I know that. Yeah. I just was like, who's this guy whose name I can't pronounce, but he's in Mountain Dew commercials. And I was like, that's cool. And I said that to him. I was like, you're in these Mountain Dew commercials. And he was like, yep. I was like, all right. <laughs> Maybe pass me the ball. We're out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> and so my calf tensed up and I heard a little pop. <clears throat> and, uh, and I tore my calf apparently. So I got a shot of Tordal. 
the day before the game, which is like a steroid shot. Nice. Like, You're able, like a real athlete. Oh, yeah. A friend of mine is a Clippers doctor, and he was like, this is what I do for them. You play through the pain if you want. I put on a compression thing, and uh, they had, like, trainers back there stretching you out. Like, it was really, it was legit, you know? A whole Gatorade buffet. You know, J.B. Smooth was grabbing all these bars. Like, I'm going to take this shit home with me, you know? And, and, um, and he not doing well? <laughs> I think it was a bit, but he definitely grabbed like four or five. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like, is he not doing well? That he needs. How many Gatorade bars are you grabbing, JB? <laughs> <laughs> Those are for display. Um, yeah, but it was, you know, I wanted to be in the NBA. So it was the closest thing to it, you know, and to Ray Allen, former Sonic. So like sitting next to him on the bench talking about shit. When I did that spin move, I ran to the sideline and D Wade was right there. And I just put my hand out to like high five him. And he just started, got this big smile on his face. I go, you taught me everything I know, man. That spin move was like vintage D Wade. He's like, that shit was legit, man. And then I get in the huddle and Ray Allen's like, dude, what the fuck? He's like, where'd that come from? I'm like, I don't know, man. I just fucking, uh, I started spinning. And I just was out of control. And I was like, I got to finish it. I was like, I got fouled too, Ray. He's like, I saw, I saw. That was, you know, just trying to <laughs> heighten how impressive it was to Ray Allen. I'm like, did you see the end one? He's like, yeah. And then he goes, dude, he goes, that, you're going to have that footage forever. He goes, if at your son or daughter's wedding, he's like, if they're up there giving a speech, you can literally just stand up and be like, yeah, 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 congrats. Let's cut to the uh, footage one more time. <laughs> you know? And uh, so that was cool to like have that moment. It's cool when you get to to have a childhood dream like that. Yeah, To dude. come out of the blue. Met so. Gary Payton, met Shaq. Shaq called me Spin Move Ray, called Brad Big Man. Uh, you know, it's just so many legends hanging around. Met Magic Johnson. I mean, you know. But again, a cool thing that that you try not to like sleep on. And that's why I was, you know, posting so much content from it. Crystal Lee, our buddy, um, former guest of this podcast, mm -hmm. right? And, and great overall fella, uh, commented below. I think I posted one little like thing of like 10 pictures. It was the last thing I posted. And he goes, wait, dude, did you play in the Celebrity All-Star Game or something? <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I'm, I'm all for the jab. And so then I think I put, Chris, I'll give you $1,000 if they ask you to play and you score one bucket. Um, and then I said I would do all these things for him if he uh, if he won MVP. It was basically like a... That would be fun. He's so floppy and, and lanky. Uh, He'd be great. Yeah. It'd be... I think they should start asking like People one... can't play. Yeah. Yeah. Just as... I mean, he knows more about sports than he lets on, but I definitely don't think that... He as as agile and flexible as he is, I don't think that will translate to the basketball court. No, and I doubt he's bummed about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be fun to challenge him. Can we talk a little bit about now that you you you've done this album and you are you assuming you got to start back over with your your writing? Yeah. Um, what's your what's your writing process like normally? What do you what do you do to to, to get kick started? Um, is there a time that you like to write, or do you write mostly on stage, or what do you find yourself doing? I don't like to keep it all on stage. Uh, I definitely do write on stage because I think, you know, from from crowd work and improvising and podcasting, you know, I just have gotten real comfortable um, trusting myself and to you know if I think of something on stage. I remember I think I heard it was actually Louis um, who said uh, anytime he feels himself like going against like an impulse, like we're talking about comedy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I should preface with that um, about bits, the way he approaches stand-up comedy bits. Like he would say, because I would feel myself a lot writing a new bit that day, being like, I can't wait to do this tonight, getting on stage and letting some extraneous circumstances the crowd being hot, yeah. somebody crushing before me. Oh, I got someone in with the heat now. Someone being in the crowd. You're like, yeah. nobody told me Bonnie Hunt was going to be here. <laughs> trying to get a spot on her show, you know? Or, uh, you know, and so I would find reasons like that to not, and I would just go, ah, and then I wouldn't do it. And I would, it would eat at me too. And so I was like, I know that I was going to feel like that, but I still wouldn't like, and, and Louis said, anytime I feel myself with that impulse of like to not do that you know speaking again of like trying a new bit i always as soon as i feel it i just push through and, and do it and so i've kind of adapted it since then and um for better or for worse you know sometimes it's great and sometimes you're like oh shit but at least i that that habit of getting conditioned to trusting yourself is pretty invaluable um well, i can't wait to see your new five on the parkland survive <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, I've got a new five on Mary Kay Letourneau, the first teacher to fuck a kid. Um, no, but uh, that is one thing I try to do. I, I like like to write late, 
So like when everything's shut down, when my phone's not up and I don't feel distracted and I just feel like when everyone, it's something cool too that I, a little rush of getting like still like working when everyone's shut down. Mm -hmm. And I also just feel clear and um, still funny and it's after shows usually. And then planes a lot, um, but it's at all hours. There's no real set time. It's like I'm constantly writing notes into my phone. I used to have a joke book and I uh, lost it and it was devastating. And so I was like, I can't go through that again. It was just like, I tried to like immediately write down everything I could remember from that book and it ended up just being a lot of shitty sketches and, and um, you know, some jokes about working at Albertsons back in the day, which have somehow come to see the light. There's one, my closure is this big story about working at Albertsons with the, uh, with a kid with Down with syndrome. that fried chicken meal. From the deli? There. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. I got potato salad every day from a girl at the deli named Carrie. And then uh, we hooked up a few times. Yeah. She was 24. I was 17. And I didn't know the protocol for post-deli handjob. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? And I didn't, like, call her or anything. I was just like, I, you're old. Like, you're older. Like, this is also, I feel like, you kind of orchestrated this all, and but I guess I am the dude, and I just it was very new, so I didn't Are really we in a relationship. <laughs> 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 Do I get the big size potato salad now? <laughs> you actually get no potato salad. I remember that being a very uh, distinct day when I walked in and hadn't called her, and she was and my buddy who was the manager was like, "Dude, um, Carrie's pissed at you." I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, dude, like, why don't you fucking follow up and try to go out again?" I was like. I don't know. I don't know. It was, I don't, what do I, was I supposed to, I thought she was just kind of, kind of hit me up. We'd go, I'd go to her house again and we, I don't know, like maybe, you know, we went to a movie once and I, but I, I was like, I don't know what, what the move is. This is all new, new for me. And he's like, yeah, dude, she's real pissed. And I was like, ah, I think you're just overreacting. And I go over to the deli and I was like, Carrie, hey, can I get it? She goes, it's going to be a minute. And I was Ooh. like, Ooh, and there was no customers. You know what I'm saying? She iced you out. <laughs> Yeah, dude, the grocery store's no got more Joe drama. Joe's for you. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a big bummer, you know, because that's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I stole so much stuff from well, that store. Well, now that you're, you're getting older, and, and do you think about settling down and having family relationship? I don't really bring this up before. I never really talk about this to anybody, but we're oh, about the same age. Yeah. Um, and you talked to me about getting in, you're going to be in your girlfriend's family fold, hose. It's a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. Um, so do you ever, do you think about settling down? Do you think about that as a comedian? Is that being a difficult thing or, um, I do. You tell me. I, uh, you know, you see how I am with my nieces and yeah, I know you're, if that's guy got written down here, family values. Yeah. That's what I think about with you. You love family. I do, man. It's, uh, because the good and the bad, it's just like, so such a big part of who I am and, and, um, my nieces, you know, my sister had them up until almost five by herself. And my stepdad's dope, but I was like, I need to really be a, a concrete male influence in their life. So I was going back once, twice a month just to be around them and help my sister out financially and just uh, emotionally and just and everything. And also I wanted to be around them. It was the first kids in the family that were, um, you know, that were I had a close relation to and they were just so dope and uh but them really not having a pops like that really like that got to me and my sister's adopted and and our dad you know was um you know again um was out of the picture pretty early so she was extra sensitive to all that and I wanted to make sure I could be around to assist in any in any way and um and I just developed this really great relationship with them and and um and it's awesome and uh it's great for the material but uh Great for Instagram stories. Great for Instagram stories. And it's also... People see you dancing with them nieces. <laughs> yeah. I know some... I didn't... I swear to God, not cognizant of doing it, but there was a couple female comics that were like, you're just trying to get these ovaries going uh, and making girls all wet for the idea of you being a good dad. And I was like, legit did not even think about that. Mm -hmm. The um, They're so funny to me. And also, I don't... Uh, when I post things like that, that's when I, I go back and look at some of that stuff on there. I, I never, you know, you got so much shit in your phone. I never go through to to find, I'm just not organized like that way with videos and pictures to be like, oh, let me go back and look at these old memories. So if it's on there and I post it, I'm like, oh, it's worth going back to look at, you know? And uh, and they're just, they just make me laugh so much. But yeah, I mean, I told my sister, I was like, I don't think I could love my own kids more than this. And she's like, it's different when they're yours, you know, mm -hmm. and you can. and. 
you know, a lot of comedians make it work. I think I've been apprehensive to, to do it because I'm like, how do you bounce? I want to still put career first and and uh, like we talked about, but I think you can do it, do it all. But um, I don't well, know. People always say, you know, the more more complex your web is, the the stronger you are. So yeah, sometimes I think people get so trapped up and like I gotta make my career career big career and, and career first when having the right partner and having like more to talk about can can help your career yeah that's one thing i learned quickly i mean and to me i fell into all those things where it's like well i am i'm just i am a dad and i am these things so i have to talk about these things early and i never um a lot for me is where i had to skip a lot of the like oh i just get to be selfish and just be about me because it's like i was either helping my mom out or then i had a kid yeah. right away um so but I've never felt bad about it. If anything, it's, it's been none, nothing but help me. And then, yeah, this once I got divorced and then the same thing, I was like, oh, wow. Like the thing that women are most like about me is that I'm a good dad. Yeah. And that's that. I'm just doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's, uh, I don't know, man. It, it, uh, I think the, the cool uncle will translate into good dad, but. You know, I also know that I would drop a lot. of. I think the balance would suffer a little for me. I just think I would be, but you tell me, man. I mean, maybe early on you're, you're all about it and then you. Yeah, no, early on the balance definitely suffers because you got to be there. Um, and things change. I mean, I quit smoking pot, you know, so I didn't smoke pot for like the first year and a half my son was born. What was that like? It was boring. <laughs> it was stressful and boring. Oh my so God. So it's not great. Because I feel like that would be the time to smoke pot. You think so, but you, you also never know when you're, you got to be awake at all times, you, you know? So, and so there was a time where I'm like, yeah, it's probably better if I'm not smoking pot. Did somebody tell you or advise you to no, do that? No, it's just me. No, it's, it's just, just you like, just I want to be a dad. Yeah. I'm going to be a dad right now. I I mean, you know, why he was found out that he was going to be born. I was stoned all the time, taking gravity bong hits and working oh, yeah. at a grocery store. And then I was like, oh, I work at a bank now and I don't <laughs> smoke pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I definitely have been baked telling my nieces like bedtime stories when they were like three and four. And those stories suffered. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, you, lose, you lose track. Yeah, they laughed. And I remember one point just sitting there in silence. And I was like, then what happens? And they're like, no, 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 you were telling the story, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know. But I think you'd be a good dad. I think I you, got, you got good timber for it and your voice. Oh, yeah. It seems like people would want to listen to you. I can be good cop, bad, bad cop. I definitely have gotten to that point with my nieces, which is cool, where I can reprimand a little and, and, and give them, like, cool advice because they, you know, they always tell me, too, when I go home, they're like, why can't you just live with us and be like another dad? And I'm like, man, that tugs at the heartstrings. And then they tell me, they always tell me things that they, they tell me they don't tell their mom and dad, which also I could be, could be like a ploy to try to get me to mm -hmm. like buy them cool shit. Yeah. And I definitely do spoil them, but I've pulled it back a lot in the last two years because they were starting to get like a little. Bratty. Yeah. Like we we're at the mall and we were riding those like little animals that you can ride in the mall. Have you seen them? They're like little go-karts mm -hmm. and they're animals. We did that shit for like an hour. And they were like, and then they walked by some like weird bouncy ball kiosk. It was like, no, it was like some sort of Nickelodeon gag spinoff where you threw it onto the ground and it splattered and then it like uh, sucked back into a ball. Who comes up with these toys? I don't know, but they lost their minds over it. So it's like, oh, here's the demo for this fucking, sh you know, shitty $5 toy. And, uh, and they were like, can we get one? I was like, no. And they were like, but you have money. And I was like, come here for a second and had to like in the mall, like, really break it down and give them a, you know, kind of a, a long, you know, speech about, you know, what working for money and just you don't get everything and the amount of things, how, um, you know, sweet their life is in comparison to, like, just really try to paint a picture of, because they were really, uh, really shitty in that moment, you know, of just and didn't get it of like, why can't we get it? Like, you get us stuff. Like, when we ask. That's your job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that was, but I, but it felt good to, to take a moment to, you know, uh, lay down the law a little bit. Um, but that being said, then, you know, we immediately went to this place called the, uh, the Playtorium, which is like Discovery Zone. Remember Discovery Zone? Mm -hmm. I remember Discovery Zone. Great fun, poor pizza. <laughs> 
Was that the slogan? Yeah. <laughs> was it really? No. Yeah. But that's what it should have been. Yeah, yeah. That's their honest slogan. Stop at Chuck E. Cheese first. <laughs> and, and then, remove your shoes. Yeah. They definitely did not Discovery have... Discovery Zone was just like for parents who were like mean who were like you can't play video games when we go out so they don't want to take you to chuck e cheese they want to take you to a place where you're supposed to be, be athletic yeah athletic and but get- also the athletic skill sets were no kid is prepped to like run up a roller slide or jump into a foam ball pit or yeah. you know what i'm saying zip like line. zip line what yeah. yeah like let me just play video games and eat pizza you gotta if you're a parent and that's the one thing that i do know like i will uh because my mom, I remember the first birthday party I had that was like, you know, uh, when she was by herself. And, and I was like, Mom, it's all good if we don't. It was, I was 12. And I was like, it's all good if we don't do like anything for my birthday. Maybe I'll just have a couple of people over. We'll go see a movie or something, right? I was like, can we afford that at least? I'm joking. Uh, and so uh, she took us, me and like 10 friends, bowling. And one of my friends threw two balls at once across the lanes. You know, you all get the, uh, everyone's got that friend that was like, this kid was like the teacher bully too. You know, like the teacher bully. Everyone Not afraid of the teacher. Everyone went to school with one kid that was just like when they were like out in the hall, and he was like, "You get out in the hall," you know, or just you know, I'm glad I'm going out in the hall. I don't have to listen to your bullshit teaching style ooh. or what you know. Ooh. Yeah, dude, yeah. this kid was like so hated but so respected. <laughs> I mean, dude, I'm talking Jess Lacasse. I'm talking Jesse Mose. Jesse Mose was the first kid I knew that was having sex. This kid was 13. He wore a wife beater and long jeans with with holes in them, and he had kind of a mustache and kind of a mullet, and he had this really like sauntery, like almost cartoony walk to him. And I was like mm. so confused because I was like, "Is that what girls are into?" So like next day, I'm just kind of like, "That's so you know. sad because you're like, oh man, this is your peak." <laughs> yeah, dude, he for sure he. But I mean, I remember putting him up on the biggest pedestal, the, the biz, biggest pedestal. I was like, "This guy is, he's seen so many boobs." You know, I don't even know what happens with sex, but this guy. This guy gets to do it a lot, you know? But uh, so we went bowling and, and my friend got us all kicked out of the bowling alley on my birthday. That's, I mean, <laughs> isn't like. I will be selling the movie rights to that story. Yeah. I got way worse birthdays. <laughs> do you? Have you ruined a kid's birthday? No, more my birthday has been ruined. Let's see. Oh, there was a time all I wanted for my birthday was Streets of Rage 2 for the sake of Genesis. So that's all? Yeah. It's a simple request. Um, and then my mom. Instead, she just thought that she'd be nicer and get me a portable television. So she wanted to buy one, but but she someone off the street sold it to her. And then she got home, just a just box box of, with a brick in there. And so then I didn't get any birthday gift. And then oh, um, no. Wait a I minute. invited all my friends over for a sleepover under the guise that we'd get to play Streets of Rage 2. You Ooh, know? So they're all there just staring at this brick being like... And there's no Streets of Rage. <laughs> you're playing Eternal Champions, which is not nearly as fun. Not a good game at all. <laughs> and then my mom's boyfriend, who was very abusive, um, decides to... It's a good time during my birthday to bust through the window and attack my mom. So that was... So, Holy you know, shit. I'm sorry about the bowling thing. <laughs> Yeah, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry your mom paid for 10 of you to go to bowling. Yes. Sorry you got three games in before your buddy got you kicked yeah. out. Holy shit. Do you remember that moment on opening or opening the box and seeing the um, brick? No, no, because she opened it beforehand. She told me about oh, it. Oh, okay. Well, at so, least it's some And I saw the box of bricks out back. But she told she because she was crying and she told yeah, me about dude. it. It was a bad birthday. But then the next year, I got to try Mexican ice cream for the first time when they okay. deep fry the ice cream, and I went Redemption. to a Bulls game and I found twenty dollars on the ground at the Bulls game. Oof! Come on, it was a good day. That, that makes a good up. Birthday. Yeah, that was twelve. That was twelve. There is an age where I think you truly need a a, a memorable birthday. You yeah. need one to like. You know, I don't think. Nobody needs a ton of them, but like you need one cool party, it, even if it is just with a couple people. I went ice skating for a buddy's birthday and he loved to ice skate. This was like maybe we were like nine, 10. I fucking never ice skated. I knew I never was going to do that. And I remember getting out there and watched the, the Winter Olympics and I was like, oh, I'm going to get out there and try to go really fast, you know, just to, you know, I tried rollerblades once and fucking fell off those and sold them at a garage sale. So clearly ice skating was going to be <laughs> just as doable. So I started going really fast. 
legs flip up cartoony and I fall down and hit my head and get a concussion. I wake up in the uh, lobby and they got like a little smell salts. Some little kid employee was doing this over me and I kind of wake up. I look up and just like out of a movie, everyone's kind of leaning over into the shot, like over my face, you know, like in, in, in the uh, frame comes like the mom, all these friends. And then my buddy whose birthday it was leans in and he just goes, you ruined my birthday. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. But I, f- I felt so bad, but also I was just like, I remember even at nine being like, dude, I just woke up from a concussion. Like, fuck off. Think about me. Yeah, dude. Yeah, people are selfish on their birthdays. We know that because we do comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it was Jesse Mose who whose birthday I ruined, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have cared because he would have been like, dude, I'm trying to fuck the vending machine girl, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Get them free peanut butter toasties. <laughs> Ooh. What was your favorite vending machine uh, machine snack? Oh, a honey bun for sure. Wow. Mm-hmm. How many could you slam? At, at peak funches. Oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a box? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A box of? I oh. wouldn't have gone to the vending machine. I would have yeah, gone to the store. the store and gotten a <laughs> box for cheaper. Yeah, I'm wasting time by putting in change individually. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Don't Mine was probably uh, maybe Fritos at like the at the YMCA or, um, or, uh, or a Snickers. Mm. A Snickers is always classic. I felt like a meal. I also like the uh, Welch's fruit snacks. Still love them. Mm. I know they're probably not the best for no, you. No, that's why I don't have them anymore. Fruit snacks in general, man. Oh, I love fruit snacks. Is that maybe the be- the top for you? I love gummies. Anything Me too. gummy. Yeah. Sour Peach packs. rings. Peach rings. Yeah. I knew we were connected on many levels. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had, where are we time wise, Austin? Oh, nice. We got plenty. Good. Okay, I can good. tell another birthday story. Yeah, please. Um, okay, because then you told about my birthday, and then you told about someone else's birthday. Uh-huh. This one's not childhood. This one's like... Um, adult. Yeah, this is okay, adult. Great. This is like one, probably my first or second year here in LA. Well, this is what's great about adult birthdays, too, because that shift when you go from kid where you're like, I want a super soaker to... I would just love like something, maybe some pre-rolled blunts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that shift Absolutely. happens. Absolutely. Or a pipe that Halston gave me for my birthday. Well, let me see My it. birthday's tomorrow. Is it really? Yeah. He gave me this pipe. That. I told him it looks almost racist. <laughs> <laughs> is that why you love it? Yeah. This is, inc- this looks, um, this looks like it was well-crafted by somebody who really cares. Mm-hmm. About making people's dreams come true. It does. And also penisy in the back. Well, every pipe's a little penisy. Yeah. I think Phil Collins said that. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the B side. Every pipe's a little penisy. <laughs> Don't let it stop you from smoking it. <laughs> Cause here's my story. I was yeah. um, first or second year in LA. I uh, got by to, to Eric Andre's birthday party. Oh, which yeah. is our Big um, one. Pretty legendary yeah. here in LA yeah. for being wild and full of drugs. For being very Eric Andre. Yeah. The nitrous tanks, uh, petting zoo. <laughs> people oh, yeah. dressed up as santa claus <laughs> not uh, on christmas yeah not on christmas um not attractive strippers <laughs> um there's just like a, just a whole wildness and this mm-hmm. was like this was probably like first or second second season maybe of eric andre's show so he was still in his apartment he hadn't moved to a house yet yeah and um I go to this party. I'm on mushrooms when I get there. I'm smoking a bunch of pot. And then, like, the thing is wild, and there's just people everywhere. And there, there's just Eric's little place. There's one little bathroom, which is Eric's bathroom in his place. And at some, one point, I don't know how often you do mushrooms, but at some point, usually when I do mushrooms, I have to poop a lot. And so I really had to at That's that intense. time. It's very intense. And I was like, I wanted to just leave and get out of there, but yeah. it was going to happen. And so I went, <laughs> and Eric there was a line no and so i knew as soon as i got out of there i had and i brought a lady with me as well so i knew as soon as i got out of there i was like i have to leave as soon <laughs> <laughs> wait as soon as you got out of the bathroom it's time to go yeah that's also I, your I know that going into the bathroom <laughs> it's like as soon as i'm out it's time to go yeah. Oh my God. Uh, hopefully, before anyone else notices. Hopefully. I got maybe 30 seconds before somebody else. Were you looking notices. for an alternate route, like a back door from the bathroom? Yeah, that was, I would like, love that. That would have been the window? excellent. That yeah. would have been amazing. So I go to the bathroom and I it is not it is not great. It's no. not good. It is gross. It's a top and, five worst poops. Yeah. I go to, to book it out of there. Yeah. Um, and then I see the other person go in the bathroom, but they don't even give me the 30 seconds. They give me five seconds. They walk in, they come back out. <laughs> 
<laughs> the door. Like in some vaudeville yeah. Broadway musical. It, 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 and I'm on Mushroom, so like everything to me is like watching it like a movie. That was the only thing that saved me was that I was on I was so high on Mushrooms that I was not embarrassed. I just saw the you humor in it. it. I saw That's the amazing. big humor in it because then I get out of the bathroom and there's this woman who is like, you know, we don't, not... Is you there's no she was comically large is what I'm what yeah. I want to say is like it's like who, she, she probably could be healthy I don't know but as like if you were to cast someone to react to somebody taking a poop <laughs> this Holy is the shit. face you want a giant large woman with big old eyes yeah she was gonna was, do more destruction than you yeah but she was still like what and then she she got a whiff and, and she just goes oh my god <laughs> <laughs> cut we got it one thing yeah. Daphne, Daphne we got it that is we don't need actually we don't even need coverage on this we're gonna use just that shot it, it was her and everybody else starts <laughs> reacting people clear out oh um I just lucky enough that everybody was up on, on enough drugs that like I mean I'm, I'm sure a handful people knew it was me oh, yeah but not enough to to call me out um what so. is it about mushrooms that gives this cinematic experience because that the first time i did it too same thing i, I was at this frat party and i was just you know freaking out a lot of things first of all i was dancing with this girl and she was grinding on me and i felt like i was gonna start fucking busting in my pants and like she was like looking at me like i'm gonna make and make it happen like i came out tonight with one goal which was to make you jizz on the dance floor in your frat and i was like well it's gonna happen and then it happened and then she walked away and was like there you go and like gave me a little wink and i was like holy shit and then I start feeling down because I'm embarrassed because I'm in broad daylight and like completely dry. I had yeah. hallucinated the whole thing. Yeah. And I was like, if I thought I came in my pants and I didn't, it's now not what? It's not when you're on mushrooms. That's the best thing about mushrooms, really. You can enjoy sexual things, but it's usually your penis won't get hard. Yeah. And that's so crazy. I had another time I did mushrooms with my friend in Malibu and it was the most, I saw the most sexy things I had ever seen in my life. It was on the beach in Malibu and we found like this spot. And there's just people, sports models taking pictures in bikinis and stuff, mm. and that's already good. Yeah. But for some reason, we find the spot, and then this group, this three women, each more attractive than the other one, all fitnessy as well. Yeah. And they just kind of like Doing weird are all a couple. Like they just are. They're they're like pre picking and preening each other like popping each other's pimples on their back and like what? just i know it's not doesn't sound sexy but it was dr pimple popper yeah and they just were kind of just giggling and frolicking and it was so funny weirdest softcore shut, porn ever it shut the whole beach down because it was it, like it made like women were dragging their men away from who were already sitting there they're like <gasps> no we gotta go now we are not sitting here anymore <laughs> there's no way you can be around this energy yeah it was crazy and we were just laughing because we were on mushrooms so we we're just enjoying them and then they leave and i shit you not a fucking college cheerleading team takes their place <laughs> and we're just like what fucking day is this that's malibu too man right like god that place is just so in its own bubble where i feel like there's just so many like experiences and hot people like also what other beach on the planet can you be like where, where you can just like, you know, reflect and be like, dude, there's hot chicks popping pimples like, you know, like that's Malibu. Like what other beach can you go to where that's like a, a sexy activity? Yeah. Not not people many. surfing. You're yeah. like hot chicks looking for blackheads, you know? Yeah. It was crazy. I loved it. Um, what are, are your, intense. they are and they're fun. I really want to do some again. Done them twice. Soon. Last time I did it was 2003 and I'm looking to, to re up. Yeah, that's far, that's far in the past. It was. I went to Will Rogers State Park, deep uh, deep in Sunset, and uh, talked to some Daddy Long Legs, listened to some Dave Matthews Band. Uh, I was going through a breakup at the time, basically got over it in one afternoon. And then we walked out of this like area. We had been in this area for about a good five, six hours by ourselves in this like creek and forest. It looked like we were in the middle of the Amazon. And all of a sudden, two people started walking around the corner. And my buddy was like, I was like, I saw them and I was like, guys, there's people coming. My buddy was like, well, you're the closest to where they're coming from. You got to initiate the convo. And I was like, fuck. So I see him and I go, they come around the corner as husband and wife. I go, 
did you guys get figure out from the f- fuck and then we all just start laughing there's like yeah. eight of us everybody just starts crying laughing and then this couple just they pause and they just go man you guys are on some fucked up shit <laughs> we all start laughing even more and then they're like well then you gotta check out there's a really cool fence just around the corner we all start laughing even harder when my buddies is like holy shit a fence thanks for the update john wayne what does that mean we all start laughing she's like it's a piece of history and then they just walk through us and they're like you guys are fucking fucking losers you're too fucked up and we're just laughing and crying we walk out of the forest after again about six hours and see three signs all on top of each other one says beware of lyme disease one says beware of ticks and one says beware of mountain lions dude would not have gone there had i seen those signs like and you know i'm sure you heard that story with the guy getting attacked by the mountain lion recently yeah like i don't think i would have been able to defend myself no. i would have probably been like this is my time i was supposed to be eaten by a mountain lion oh, you guys would have made friends and it been a fun cartoon wow on Shro- maybe on shrooms is maybe the only way you can truly defect animal violence mm-hmm. like hey dude you don't want to do this yeah i'm one with you yeah. I went with nature now. And they're like, what was the last thing you said to him? You don't want to do this mountain lion. And they start petting his head and he bit his fucking hand off. <laughs> yeah. I'm one with That's you. That's one thing I hate about mushroom hikes is uh, the hike part. Like, just let me do mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Just drop me off there. Yeah. I was like, just, yeah. Drop me off on a level ground, outside area. Beautiful, please. Please. I love it. Need but that I don't need nature. to be sweating a bunch. No hiking to do mushrooms i understand that i never have ever done them on an airplane um i did them on my way to a flight recently and that was a poor decision yeah i could have told you that it was a poor decision you freak out but yeah but it was fun to go through <laughs> <laughs> through tsa or just through the just through emotional that highs and lows so yeah of being like oh wow okay no this isn't fun i'm not gonna do this again <laughs> sometimes you gotta do that to yeah. know yeah Sometimes you got to go to Walmart on Black Friday just to see that, yeah. oh, shit, I could lose I my should, life yeah, over a plasma. Yeah, that's a idea. What are uh, some of your, your goals right now as far as your accomplishments? A lot of things. you got the album coming out. The album coming um, out. Things, but, like, personally, also professionally, do you have what, what are your upcoming goals or long-term goals? Um, that's a great question, man. How often do we ask ourselves that or get asked that by friends, you know? Um and that's why this podcast is so great, Ron. Thank you. And you are the person that I would want to have these questions thrown at me. Um, well, I feel like you're trying to not answer them. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be here. Are we done? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, goals. I look, man. I set. Um, I try to set daily ones. I. I. I think it's somewhat difficult in this business to. You know, I, I I try to give myself, you know, I try to be, um, I'm not very, by saying not realistic, I feel like I'm always thinking bigger and shooting for the stars more or less and uh, trying to do things. If I want to do something and I get fixated on it, I'm going to do it. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Like when I decided that this album was going to happen and I was going to not, I was starting to try to put a special together and was going to fund it myself. And then I go, you know what? Like, uh, and then the album thing became a reality and it, and it wasn't like an easier move. It was just like, uh, a stepping stone to the special. I was like, oh, maybe I am not, um, maybe I should, instead of trying to do it myself and sell it out there and seeing what happens when people do that. And sometimes it falls by the wayside. I was like, maybe I just keep on jamming up. Maybe I'm not at that point to where people are going to be clawing at my door to, to get one. And maybe that's uh, worth waiting for. Um, and, uh, and the idea of an album became just really appealing. And so I set that goal and it seemed, um, you know, a, a little more, it was more fun to, to get together too. I, I didn't, I don't think you should set goals that are going to drive you crazy or, or not become enjoyable that there's part of the process that you end up, um, you know, it's, it's so unattainable that you just stress yourself out over it. And then you're just like, well, what was I even trying to do that for in the first place? Cause all this should be fun at the core of it. And, um, you know, I, uh, Voice over being on cartoons was a big goal of mine in uh, when I got out here, and um, you know we were just talking about that pre-show, like doing Robot Chicken recently, and I'm uh, a lead on the show uh, Shira on Netflix that DreamWorks does, which you know them You're well. Shira? From. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, this is me, Shira. <laughs> hey guys, uh, so I'm, look, I know I'm the princess of power, and uh, I know that. Like, look, I've been through some shit, okay? <laughs> the magical forest, uh, I got mixed up with some elves and some weird cotton candy. I did shrooms. Uh, y- 
you get look. I, I'm friends with Jesse Mose and um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm uh, Shira's sidekick, uh, talking horse, Swift Wind, and uh, which is basically just my voice. It's kind of like the comedic relief of the show. And then I'm on doing a show with Seth Green's people for Hulu um, that comes out in the fall called Crossing Swords. Oh, that's really cool. I want to do more of that. I want to be being like these side characters is dope. I want my own show. I was telling you before, like sketch show. Like I want to um, continue to grow um, my brand so that I can have this like just big blanket of opportunities to where I can um, include a lot of people and be at, be at the helm of it. Because I the way I used to do with my YouTube videos where I'd write and direct and produce, it was all collaborative, but I liked that I was – you know, at the at the base, I was bringing everything together and kind of overseeing it and getting, you know, final say on some things. But just being, I want to do that on a, on a larger scale. And um, stand up, obviously, like I I go up pretty much every night, and I'm you know traveling a lot and and pushing myself there is is when I push myself with stand up, I feel like everything else kind of falls into place because I think it's the moment you get complacent with writing and 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 just. When when I'm growing with stand up, I feel like I should be growing as a person too, and um, and and podcasting too. I I have learned so much from that avenue, and and I want to keep growing that. And everything's synonymous, you know. The more podcasts and stand up, I mean, you're seeing that from your special man, like what you're doing on the road, and these people coming to your shows. Like when you're posting, these, I mean, it's like people are really fired up coming to see you now, which is. Um, which look, they have been forever. Even when you just were doing Conan appearances, I remember people freaking out about Ron Funches. But it's got to be dope that like you've laid all these other um, you know steps. Now people will like have a, an easier climb to get up to. There's a metaphor in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, yeah, but um, so I mean, I try to set uh, goals, but sometimes I feel like there's so much uncertainty in the business. And, uh, and and sometimes things can be a little lofty that I, I go, I want to do this. I'm going to work as hard as possible to do it. Um, but I, uh, you know, being, you know, the lead in the movie was something I definitely was trying to do and, and shot this uh, indie comedy over the summer with Thomas Lennon and, and Jonathan Kite and, and uh, Richard Kind. And, and that was cool. That was definitely like a goal was to be the lead in the movie. Like that's what I went to acting school for. I thought I was like leading man or whatever. And and um personally uh to not be at my family's disposal as much i think is like a good thing i could probably uh do without but that's easier said than done because i'm just never i can't sleep at night if i know that i can do something and i'm not doing it you know um being a good boyfriend Where do you think that comes from that people please mentality man well you know so i was a, a real big kid uh growing up and um love to double fist pop tarts and cool whip you know what i'm saying mm. and um you know when i started making people laugh then i was the funny kid not the fat kid so that's why i really tried to chase that feeling hey it felt good and i started to recognize as a kid like oh not a lot of kids can do this you know that's pretty cool and it's fun and uh but it, again it was distracting from like it stopped people from teasing me because then i was like accepted as this and not that and i had control over that and um and I think I just, all, and then again with the stuff with my sister and mom, and I think I just uh, feel a genuine, like, it makes me feel good to help like that and uh, and 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 listen and, and try to, and I think that's, you know, a blessing and a curse, and it's, you know, because sometimes you're overstepping your boundaries or, you, you know, you need to let people figure shit out, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to balance that more, but um, with family, I just feel like, also, I'm like, fuck, man, like, hopefully this isn't all the money I'm going to make, and and. I'm blessed to be in a position to where I can do things and help my sister out and give my nieces opportunities that they're not going to have otherwise. And that make that does fulfill me on a, on a certain level. And like life rules, you know, it's like fucking what I definitely like, I come to the the house that, you know, that, uh, that Funch is built and, and I am like, fuck, I definitely want this, you know, but you know, if it's going to be a few more years so that I can help family out in certain things, then like, I'm also cool with that. But also talk to me in two months when I'm like, fuck man, I want to, I want a nicer bathroom. <laughs> I want a steam shower. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, sis. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how it goes for, for all of us, though. Yeah. You know, you look at other people and I go, I mean, I'm grateful. That's one thing um, that I always try to do whenever I come, whenever I pull up from, well, it's one of the best things about moving here. It's like now, 
when I was living in my old apartment, I was happy, but I it was too crowded, and yeah. I was had my son, and my son was always like, "I want a pool, I want a pool," and um, I would pull up to my house, and I wasn't feeling happy, you know. And now when I come home every day, even it. yeah, even when I'm like had a bad set or something, I'm like, "God damn!" Like I get to pull up to like I I did this and I paid for this Isn't that crazy? with comedy with money. Comedy, yeah. You said that in your special, yeah. By the way, I really loved <clears throat> that I got to be at your special. And I don't know why I didn't get a shout out during it, because I told you I was there, but uh, <laughs> in my fucking hometown at the theater, I saw the Blair Witch Project at in 2001. <laughs> well, you left that part <clears throat> out. <laughs> <laughs> if you would have told me that. Yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. Um, well, shit, man. Yeah, it was a great time. I'm just happy that you were there. That was one of the reasons... <clears throat> um, I was like, this is gonna go okay because there are people, there are like comedians here to just see me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you get a little extra sense of just like what that um, just comfort that of just that I'm good at this. That like, cause to me, you know, I mean, also you want people to just show up, yeah, but we all know like when like yeah, when a comic goes out of the way to come. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're like, oh, okay. Like yeah. you know, that was one of the things. The first time I was in San Francisco and I did the punchline and. Uh, Tig Notaro and Stephanie showed up and I wow. was like I was like do you want to do a guest set please tell me you don't want to do a guest set because you'll blow me out of the water <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she was please like just have this yeah and she's like no no I don't want to guess that I'm just here we want to go on a wow. date we want to see some comedy and wow I told her you were good we should come see you what are you going to do when The Rock comes to see you live <laughs> will you you know like fuck dude that is will you just see like young Ron opening the brick present and be like dude it's all it's all good it's all good now <laughs> yeah well it's been all good yeah, it it's has. been all good and that's one of the great things about uh i think becoming an adult right is being able to just not necessarily rewrite your childhood but go ahead and, and accomplish some of those dreams whether it be with the rock or being in the nba um celebrity game <laughs> and have these things that um, your 12 year old self would have fucking flipped out over. Yeah. And you got to be cognizant of that. You have to like let yourself compare and contrast and go back there for a second. Otherwise, right? Like, yeah. Otherwise, you get caught up or you're upset. Like, I was doing the thing for this laugh and, um, oh, yeah. Thing. And it was like, it was fun and I it was, but it was not well ran. <laughs> and so I was getting a little frustrated. Yeah. And I didn't know what my jokes were and some of the jokes they gave me were bad and i was like well i'm happy to rewrite but can you approve these yeah. and let me know and and it was just a big hassle and then but then a part of me had to be like well what would 12 year old you think that you're fucking they ask you even though you don't like your line but you're doing a sketch with bobby moynihan you're fucking doing you're in the same show as snoop dogg and fucking billy crystals down the room holy shit and you, yeah and so it just you snoop this. dogg and billy crystal mary fuck kill that is the ultimate <laughs> game for children's parties bar mitzvah that wow did you talk to snoop and or billy i talked to snoop not billy i i, I was trying to give billy his space <laughs> okay That's fuck weird. i would have barged right in yeah, yeah i know it's weird but like if to, you're on the, the, it's just like yeah. to me that's like he is the what I want my career to become. Yeah. And so there's a part of me that was like, just definitely afraid to go, like, I will go make an idiot of myself. I get that. I do feel like there's some thing to be said about being on that show. That's like, you're there. Like there's a reason like, so it's not out of the ordinary for you to walk in and be like, Mr. Crystal. Yeah. Crystal, yeah. Crystal light was one of my favorite drinks. If I get a second chance, if I get a second yeah. chance, I go like, Hey, we also were on this. <laughs> <laughs> Your instincts are right, though. Uh, Wait, but you had a Snoop interaction. Yeah, yeah. Was that just, favorable? He just came over and, and shook my hand. And was Did nice. he know you are? No, he just. I think he was just. Um, I think he's been doing it for so long that he's just happy when he see black faces. And... <laughs> you and Snoop on anything is such a great like. You both have two of the coolest voices, energies. Like I don't know if it's a. I know he's got his cooking show and his fucking game show. But yeah, like, I'm trying to get on that one with uh, yeah. him. You're, Ron, there's going to come a point when people, we're going to look at your IMDb and we're going to be like, oh, he's been on every show. Aww. And that's great. Thank I know you, you love that. I know you're like, I remember you said that to me once too and it definitely put a, an ear in my, uh, a, a bug in my ear where I was, where you were like, 
I want to be like, why wouldn't you want to be on TV as much as possible? And like, obviously you're not going to say yes to like, I'm 16 and pregnant. You know, you're not going to be like a, you know, a, a comedy counselor to be like, oh, maybe you guys should just stop fucking. You know, you're in the eighth grade. Or I don't know whatever you would say, <laughs> whatever your lines would be. Hopefully they give you better lines than that. But like there's certain shows where you're like, yeah, like I have the opportunity because of what I've done to be on this. Like on Busy Show, you were so good. And that was uh, like shit like that where it's like, yeah, man, like you get the opportunity to be on, like people want you on that stuff. Like you got to do it. And know you're going to deliver and build like more fans from that. Like shit, man, the amount of people that watch her show on E! Like, yeah. That Who probably never go to a comedy club. Yeah, that yeah. are like, yeah, dude. What, what a great way to just, you know, keep introing yourself to people. Yeah, I think that's the job. I think that's what you want to do in not just our business, but most businesses. Otherwise, yeah. you're you're stagnant and you're not, you're not, um, there's no growth there. So yeah. that was another thing about going and doing the laugh-in was like, I was the, I was definitely back to the and more. You know, I didn't have no, you know, no dressing room, no nothing. They oh, were just shit. very much like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> See, another reason you should have stopped in on and popped in on, on B Chris. You could have been like, hey, yeah. man, I'm on the show. They didn't give me a dressing room, yeah, but they, they said I could chill in here. Yeah, and, I got uh, squat in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one here in Mid You seem like a nice guy. That's the only thing I didn't notice is that everybody's dressing rooms had the same snacks, except they all had like um, veggies and watermelon trays and little cookies, except for Snoop Dogg, who had just like Chips Ahoy's and Nutter Butters and stuff. Oh my God. I was God. like, he's so cool. <laughs> he's a regular guy. He's like, dude, he's, his snack selection is just every grab bag at a roller skating party. Yeah. Where you're just like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. We got to break uh, I mean, a sweat. Who, the, who, you, who wouldn't know the best snacks but a guy who's Snow. been smoking pot that long? Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, when I, in my frat, I was the kitchen steward. Me and two other guys, we would go to Costco every Sunday to buy all the food for the frat. And I remember one day, and then I, I had the kitchen key. So stoners, this is when I started smoking pot. Stoners would always wake in, uh, bust in my room at like two in the morning and be like, Adam, can, you, can we get the kitchen key? I want to make some fucking taquitos or some omelets. I'm like, dude, it's fucking two, three in the morning. They're like, I got a blunt. We can spark it up. I'm like, I got class at seven. If I can hold it up in the window, I'm like, all right, I'll be right down. You know, yeah. I go down, we smoke. And I remember at one point we had bought Costco muffins, pop tarts, and ice cream. And I was so baked. And I put uh, ice cream in between two Costco muffins and then Pop-Tarts on the outside. And I go to take a bite and my buddy just starts laughing. He goes, you were a fat kid, weren't you? <laughs> and I go, why? He goes, because fat kids make the best stoners, man. Yeah. Because your snacks, you're thinking outside the box. Yeah. Your oh, concoctions yeah. That's are. I come up with the N Nutella and Kicks. <laughs> One of my favorites. What? Yeah, you get a nice cool milk, some Kicks, you put some Nutella in there and then, then that milk will firm up the Nutella and it's like, oh, it is a delicious treat. All right, isolate that audio, send it to Nutella and Kicks. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, the amount of cereal chocolate combos that aren't being uh, mm -hmm. fulfilled. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I remember I used to have cereal uh, yeah. beaten like tricks, but then taking the marshmallows out of the Lucky Charms yeah. to put in there. Oh yeah, dude. You know? You ever go Cookie Crisp and Fruity Pebbles? No, that's a fun man. Dude, that's a fun Passover. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one well, thing it's time we got to land the plane. How we do every episode, we ask for a piece of advice, a thing you've been thinking about, something uh, that maybe you, you just want to share with the Getting Better universe, um, that's something that's been on your mind that you can help us out with. Mm. It's very vague. I love that. Um, well, something that I... Um, feel like I've gotten to be more aware of for my own life, um, and it's easier said than done. But um, perspective, I think uh, when I find myself, and especially living in LA, whether it's in traffic or in line at the at the coffee shop, and someone's taking too long, or or, or dilly dallying, or you know, even today at an audition, I was waiting in the wrong room for a good twenty minutes, and that girl who was also there got a call on her phone and goes, "Oh yeah, really? Okay." And there was no one there. There was no sign in sheet, and I didn't think to call my agent yet. But she gets a call, and then she goes, "Okay, cool." She picks up all her stuff and goes down to where the audition is, and I was like, "She knows I was here for that too. Why didn't she go?" You know, hey. uh, I, you're, I'm just assuming you're here for this. It's actually down there. So I sat there for like another 20 minutes and then went down there and I got a little irked about that. And one thing that I'm really trying to do better, and I think uh, this is something that um, takes time. It's an acquired skill set, but uh, to, um, to, uh, to count your blessings and to uh, take a step back <clears throat> and, uh, and to give benefit of the doubt. I try to do that a lot and I think sometimes you can get burned from it 
you know, when you're trying to like, if someone's like maybe yells at you in traffic, instead of getting like real fired up, being like, oh, dude, I don't know what they're going through right now. And, and try to put it, put your, yourself into that space because um, at the end of the day, we have control of our emotions and, and how we want to approach things and, and where we want to get fired up. It's like dealing with a heckler in, uh, in a stand-up show. You can ignore or address it, you know, and uh, a lot of times I will address because it's fun and it's a challenge and I like to break the wall and, and see what I can, you know, create from that. But definitely plenty of times I'll ignore because I'm like, that's going to distract, pull from the momentum and this guy's uh, not worth it and I don't want to give him the time of day and whatever. So I try to be real cognizant of that in everyday life and, and give benefit for the doubt. It's a healthier way to kind of split the difference on, on, on um, having any sort of negativity throughout the day, which, and to piggyback on that, not being hard on yourself because, uh, man, do your best every day for that day and you can't ask for more than that, you know, and do something for yourself and do something that's moving, moving the needle career wise or, or creatively or just, um, you know, smile as much as possible. You know, I find myself too sometimes just sitting there like, you know, not, and I'm like, oh, why am I so bumming? And I'm like, oh, dude, like find something to like smile about or chum up that person on the plane next to you or, um, you know, think about, you know, Ron taking a shit on mushrooms, you know, or like <laughs> something that just like bring, like be bring. actively you know, be actively, uh, God, there's a great way to fucking button this advice. Be actively, uh, you know. Looking for joy. Boom. Mic drop. Boy, I wish I was Snoop. I dropped some cookies. <laughs> and I think that's a great advice. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think that's one thing um, I always try to remember is uh, um, I remind myself of like, it's called like the pursuit of happiness, not yeah. the guarantee of happiness. So if you want to be happy, it's the thing you have to chase down. It's the thing that you constantly have to be on the hunt for. Yeah. And it's a moving target. So sometimes you're, you're, you're happy for a while and then some things shift in your lives. And you, ha you have to always um, be truthful with yourself and be on the pursuit of that happiness. And, and usually that does come in with a lot of selflessness and helping others and and also helping yourself and fulfilling your own dreams yeah um that's something i fir firmly believe in that a lot of times especially when i was younger in my 20s i was just waiting for a happiness to to drop out of the sky and come to me or to purchase it yeah and i had to learn that i needed to go get it and it came through a lot of um, things i'm doing now which is exercise better diet yep. and better relationships and 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 fulfilling myself um creatively Happiness begets happiness for sure, you know, but you got to, yeah. like you said, and actively. surrounding yourself with happy people and cut, <sighs> cutting those who aren't. And that's easier said than done, man, because there's, you know, you got that loyalty, you know, cloth that you just don't want to burn and, and ties to people that you like can, you know, constantly persuade yourself into, you know, buying into the, oh man, I've known this person. Like we have all these memories. Like, how could I just get, it's like, dude, you got to like, you got you one shot at all this to, to to be your best self and and you don't want to you know you don't want to uh you want to get it you know sometimes you gotta you gotta wipe your butt even though you haven't taken a shit <laughs> i think there's no better way to wrap it up <laughs> thank you for coming i love you man thanks love for you having too. me ronnie